Thanks for picking up. Hello. You're never gonna guess You're what happened never to me. Gonna guess what happened to me this week. It's almost the end of the year, and that meant for me unanswered texts that I swear I replied to, but then didn't because I fell asleep at four in the afternoon, fully clothed, headphones and shoes still on, only to wake up four hours later with no fucking clue who or what I even am. Eating dry bread for dinner for a week because. I'm going home for Christmas in a week and I won't be able to finish it before I leave mentality. Attending the last party before everyone goes home for Christmas with the only substantial thing that is being said. Goodbye, I love you, see you next year. I think I'm gonna straighten my hair because I haven't done that in so long. Ooh, she smells a bit burnt. <laughs> POV or bug. There's a lamp there. I'm struggling to hold a normal conversation and topics I can usually chat my ass off about I'm suddenly clueless over. And then entering and exiting countless of brightly lit shops where in each Wham's last Christmas seems to be the communal chosen torture. And as the vibrations are eating my eardrums alive like some Xmas parasite, I quickly buy whatever is shiny enough to escape this terrible Christmas anthem. Reading Julia Fox's book because I really fucking love it. And I'm not gonna lie, spending most of my time alone, even though it's Christmas, because my social battery is just empty. Went to bed incredibly late though because I was watching these like survival documentaries and once in a while I get really into them and I can't stop watching it and I'm like I'm gonna enter like an ultra marathon and I want to change my whole life. Yesterday I really wanted to do an ultra marathon. I also wanted to like do like a swim and all this shit. Uh, today I don't want to do an ultra marathon. Maybe I kind of do. I think it would be so fun and cool. Push yourself to the limit. Um, but I did learn a lot from the documentaries, you know. I learned that I should never stop and I should never ever give up. So it was quite inspirational, eh? but also meant that I couldn't sleep because my brain was like overstimulated. Today I had on the planning to go to university, which sounds like my psycho, I'm aware, because it's literally Christmas holiday and it's a Sunday. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know what he said. Charging up my social battery at the library was probably the worst idea I've had in a long time. The electricity didn't work because of course they didn't expect anyone to be here now, so uncaffeinated, agitated and with a lonesome soul here and there I tried to go through my plasmid flashcards. I guess the only good thing was that I could eat my snacks in peace without people staring at me and calling me the devil under their breath. listening to Beach House and it's really, the feels are getting to me, like I'm asking for tears to be shed. The weird thing about a social battery is, is that there is no resemblance whatsoever to those rechargeable batteries in your phone or laptop. 
My soldier battery can just suddenly deplete and mid-conversation I turn into a potato with the processing speed of a goldfish having open brain surgery. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to feeling like shit, which only makes it more difficult to explain to others. And I guess the soldier battery is more like those AA magnesium dioxide batteries. You have to throw them out sometimes and just start from square one. So how do you prevent the social battery from getting drained? Well you don't, because they are meant to get drained. I think we're designed to have to spend time by ourselves, even if it's awkward and uncomfortable. Maybe you have those one or two friends in your life that you can hang out with in complete silence. You don't even have to think about what you say or do and the concept of a social battery doesn't even exist around them. Well, to get to that point in your friendship, it took a lot of time probably. And so the special friendships you have with those few people are no different than the ones you have with yourself. You need to invest in it just as much as you need it with your now closest friends. So spending time alone is almost like getting to know a new person. It takes some time, but before you know it, you're at ease and found yourself a lasting best companion. I guess the saying is true. You're really your own best friend. 